Hi, this is Dennis K0TX. Today we're looking at connecting HT to Digirig Mobile for use with Vara FM. For HT, we're going to be using Baofeng UV5R. You can use Digirig in any configuration for this purpose. You'll also need uh, transceiver specific cables and the USB cable. Uh, for HTs, I recommend short USB cable with ferrites and shielding. This uh, limits the RFI situation uh, that is often associated with uh, using HTs. So we'll start with resetting the radio to default. I'm going to go to menu number 40. And I'm going to fully reset the radio. Now, next thing I want to do is set squelch to zero. And I'm going to lower the power by pressing the pound key. Later we can bump it up, but to, to begin with, we'll start with low power. And uh, just to have some test audio, I'm going to set it to the weather station. Okay. So next, I'm going to open the device manager on the computer by right-clicking the start button and selecting device manager. There we're going to open COM ports and sound groups. And uh, then we're going to plug in Digirig. Here you can see new COM port, in this case COM port 6, and the USB PNP sound device. If you don't see the COM port, it's possible that your computer doesn't have a driver, and that can be downloaded from getting started page at digirig.net. If you don't see either of those, there's probably a problem with USB cable. So until you see both of those, there's no point to continue here. So next, we're going to go to control panel sound devices. I do that by clicking on the speaker in a tray and then selecting sound. Here you'll see USB PNP sound device as the speaker and as the microphone. Initially, those are called speaker and microphone. I like to rename them to digirig and change icon so I can easily recognize them in the list later. For levels, we're going to set levels to 20 on the speaker. No other settings need to be changed. On the microphone, we're going to set also rename and change icon. We can put the checkbox on listen. This way we can uh, monitor the audio from the radio on the computer. and it's important to uncheck automatic gain control and the uh, level also is set to 20 initially later this can be changed as needed but initially we'll go with 20. another important thing windows assign the defaults to the new sound card that you plug into your computer what you want to do is change the defaults to your normal microphone and the speaker on your computer if you don't do that the default sounds from your computer will end up on the air or if somebody calls you on Skype they're gonna hear the the static from the radio instead of your mic so if you're using the, the same computer or even if you don't it's uh, important to change the defaults from the rig to your normal sound card components okay so another point if you plug Digirig to another USB port it is possible that you'll have to go through these steps again because that will essentially create a different sound card so just either use the same USB port all the time or uh, make those adjustments for every possible combination there okay so next thing we're gonna do is we can actually 
connect the radio. So K1 connector goes in the in the side of the bow fang, and on the other side it is plugged into the audio socket. So now we can power up the radio and sl slowly add volume. Route five above tonight mostly clear. So what I'm gonna do I'm gonna remove the listen property from DigiRig so it doesn't hiss over my uh, over my recording. That's gonna be in recording devices. Okay. So back to powering up and add a little bit of volume and we can actually see the volume coming in in the bar here on DigiRig. So we don't want to add too much. So next thing we're going to do we're going to run WarFM. Here uh, we're going to go to sound card and make sure that DigiRig is selected as both input and output devices. If you didn't change the name, that will be different. Because we changed the name to DigiRig, it's easy to recognize it and select it. So next we're going to go to PTT. We're going to select COM port and COM6 in my case. That's the port number from the device manager that we saw earlier. And RTS as the PTT method. Okay, so using the knob on the radio, we can adjust the volume and you can see it's now kind of pegging too high. So we can lower it to about three quarters. And uh, another thing I like to do is use another radio on the same frequency. I'm going to tune in both of the radios to the DigiPeter frequency. It's going to be 145 on 90 in my case. And I'm going to do the same here. Okay. I'm going to move this radio closer to the window and this will be monitoring. Make sure you don't kick the knob, audio knob on the radio and it stays where it was. So now I'm going to go and run other calibration. Here we put the call sign of the remote station and we run the calibration test. Okay, so uh, here you could hear the local station uh, sending the packet or sending the transmission, gradually incre increasing the audio levels. And then uh, there was a response from the remote station. And in this case, is reported uh, acceptable levels with a little bit of uh, noise there, but overall it, it got approved. Um, so we're good to go with this setup. If yours, doesn't get approval it will give the reason uh, for example audio is too high and in this case you would have to adjust it if you don't get any response then the situation is likely to do with the quality of RF link maybe you need to get uh, in sight of the remote station or maybe use better antenna or uh, just try with some local setup but if you run into any difficulties with this, uh, you're welcome to post in the community forum, which is forum.digirig.net, and we'll figure it out. That's all for now. 73.